Hey guys, this is Matt Kids on one with our second iPhone Objective-C programming tutorial. In the previous tutorial, I taught you how to set the text of a label to the text of a text field and how to add to that text. Today I'm going to be showing you how to set the text of a label to a number. And I'm also going to be teaching you about different types of variables and strings. So let's get started by making a new program and I'll call it counter. So what this is going to do is there's going to be a label on the screen and a button on the screen. When you press the button, the number, a number in the label will go up. So we're going to obviously have an IV outlet for UI label. And I'll call that my label. We're also going to want to have an IB action for button press. Alright. And so now let's just implement this. Alright. So let's do the stuff we already know first. Let's set this up in Interface Builder. That's really the first step I always do. Occasionally it's the last, and then I build and go, and I haven't set anything up. Like it's beside the point. So, right. some button, and when we could say increase in some there, in here we'll link my label back to. And if we run it now, nothing will happen. But we know it's set up. Alright. So let me just refresh your memory here if you don't remember. We can say my label set text colon. And then after the colon is something that represents text. You can do at quote a piece of text, another quote, close bracket, semicolon. So we can do something like this. Alright. And if you see here, it changes to 1 because I set the text to 1. Now there's a universal key we have to understand before we can make this number continue to change. What you have to understand is that while the program is running this code will keep on getting run again and again. Alright, now if we look back here this is a variable, my label. We can access my label and it, it, it stays on the, on the interface even when that function, even when we're not inside of there. All right, so even while the button's not being pressed, my label still exists. So we want something like that, that always exists. And we want something like that, that always exists, that represents a number. So I'm going to say int my number right here. This is something called a variable. The type is an int, and that means that it's, it's a number and the name of it is my number. All right. There are several things you can do with numbers. You can say my number equals a constant, which is just a number. You can say it equals a constant plus a constant. You can say it equals another variable plus a constant, another variable plus another variable. You can do different mathematical arithmetic operations like time, divide, etc. We're going to say my number plus one because we want to add on to this number. So now if we run, nothing will be different. But under the hood, my number will keep on getting bigger and bigger. We just won't know yet. So the question now is, how do we get a piece of text that represents my number? You might think we could just say my number here, and it would work. Well, it's not going to work because my number represents a number, not a piece of text. We run this. It's probably going to get us uh, exe pad access. If we take a look, I can even tell us the error we got. Anyway, that's uh, that's not something you want to do because if you're a computer guy, you'll understand it, it. It tries to read a pointer that's the integer and it won't work. Anyway, the way we get a piece of text that that represents this number is this: we can have a piece of text variable as well, and this is a variable that'll keep on getting that will only exist inside of this function right here. We're going to call that my number string. And right now, ns string star means this is a text variable, meaning this represents a piece of text. We can say this equals another piece of text, and that's all we can do. So we can say it equals 1, and that would work. But there's a way to get a special piece of text that already exists in memory that has a number, and that's ns string, string with format, and I'll explain this to you in a second, my number. 
and this represents a string, and therefore this represents this, and that represents this. So if we run this now, it will work. Let's go back here and explain to you what this code is. This whole thing represents a string. This right here, first of all, it's left bracket, and a string. Now remember how we did left bracket, the name of something space text, right bracket? That, that was a function that returned a string. This is also a function that returns a string. It's just that you give it something with this colon. And what you give it is another something that represents a string. So we got a lot of strings here. We're saying something that represents a string equals string, and then we're giving that a string. And if we take a look at what's inside this, this at quote, mm, quote, you can see there's a percent %d there. This is a magic thing that when it's for a format, so a string with format, for instance, it means I want you to put a number here later. And then we have to tell it what this number is. So we do comma and then the number that we're giving it. So one more time, that's review. It replaces percent %d with my number. And that works. What would happen if we wanted multiple numbers here? Say we wanted to say my number, dash, and then my number. We can do another comma, do another thing that represents a number. And this would be the second number. So I don't know why you'd want to do this specifically. But yeah, you can say 3 here. And if we do 3, it'll say my number dash 3. Let's look at that. You know, I don't know why that would be useful in any way. But later on, you're going to want to have multiple things in these formats. It's just an important thing to know. But there's one more thing. If this represents a string, and we're putting it there, but this also represents text. Can we just put it there? And the answer to that is yes, we can. And this will work the same. Also, if we want to say number colon, you can just do number colon right there. And number colon doesn't mean anything magic, so we'll try to replace that. That says the number colon. So that was just a brief tutorial on some variables, data types, stuff like that. Uh, you can go into more depth with this by yourself. I just wanted to expose you guys to this numbers and uh, to variables and stuff. Uh, we're definitely going to be using this in the future, so I would make sure you know it. Uh, I am going through this pretty quickly, hoping you guys will learn it, but if you can't, which is completely understandable, just ask the question, comment on the video. Uh, I'll try to respond to all your comments as fast as possible, um, but you can also Google it. That's what I actually do if I can't figure something out, but, um, yeah. So anyway, thanks for watching MacKids101. Um, subscribe and goodbye.